Okay, so we've got a Pinterest account and we want to use it, but we'll look at a couple of settings first, as we usually have done on the previous days. We created an account, we edit a few settings, and then we start using it, because the default settings sometimes are not the best settings. So wherever you're at, you should see at the top left you have a little Pinterest logo button and a search box. We'll look at those later. And then we've got this, this little, they call it a hamburger menu. These three little lines, they call it the hamburger menu. You might see it on other apps and websites, but it means options. And then you, the name of your business. And then an icon here of two pins. They kind of look like the yin-yang, but it's two pins. Those are your notifications. So we've heard of notifications on the other networks. But what I want to do is click on the name of your business there on the top right. And that should take you. That should take you to your profile. Remember, we went to Pinterest.com/mashable. Currently, my account is Pinterest.com/victorsbake1135. And yours is probably also something weird that you don't want. So one of the first things I want to do is change my Pinterest username, my Pinterest address. I don't know why they don't make it part of the sign-up process. Like with Twitter, we were able to create a, the username and the address. Remember that? We could pick Victor's Bakery as our address right away. On Pinterest, it doesn't do it automatically, which I think is very odd. I'm sure they're going to fix that later. But the way to fix this is you have to be on this screen, and then you will see on the right, Edit Profile go ahead and click edit profile and this is also useful for changing it later let's say you're Victor's Bakery but then you want to become Victor's Bakery San Diego so click that edit profile and this is where it lets you choose your business name which is not the same as your address your address is the username right here pinterest.com slash I don't want that I want Victor's Bakery because this has hundreds of millions of users though hopefully your name is not taken it's just like you've had to try to pick your name on Twitter and Facebook and so forth. Try to pick the name here that really applies. Unfortunately, you don't get any feedback to say that it is available until you click Save. So just try to change your username. Don't worry about anything else. We'll get back to it. Change your username and click Save. It won't tell you if it's available until you click Save which is another odd thing, I think. Click Save. Oops, name already taken. I'm sure they have a lot of smart programmers on Pinterest. I don't know why they don't program it to tell me at that moment that it's not available. It's, a, I know, a first world problem, but I don't want to waste my time. So, Victor's Bakery, I'll try some other combinations or whatever. Hopefully you find the name you want. I'm going to keep this one because it's just a fake account. But you want to choose your proper name. Hopefully the name that you're using for all your networks to be consistent. Are these things uh, sensitive? No. So you could put capital letters in here just to be able to read it, but the system won't care if it's capital or, or lowercase. You want to add your company logo, of course, as soon as you can. If you don't have it with you, you want to do that when you get home, because you won't entice people to follow you when you've got the generic pin icon. You'll look like another fly-by-night organization. you look like another spammer that hasn't filled in their profile. You want to use the About section here. I believe there's a limit, but you don't really want to write an essay here. You want to write a couple of sentences about your business. And you can use the same one you've used the same bio that you've used for your other networks. Or what you could also do is use part of that biography section to write something that entices people to follow you. Let's say I've got plenty of followers on Twitter. How do I convince some to come to Pinterest? Well, I could write also here Follow us for exclusive coupons. You won't be able to get those coupons on other networks, for example. You have to follow us on Pinterest.
did you say how many letters we could have in the about you? No, but let me put in a lot. And let's see what it says. 160 characters. And what you want to do in this about screen also is think about if you can organically add any of the keywords of your business. So in my SEO class, we would talk about developing your, S your keyword, your keyword plan. And so I've used some of them here. Um, actually, I should call it, I should say family-owned bakery. So I'm going to be tr I'm going to try to use the keywords coupons and bakery. So I've added them into my my biography here. I'm not saying just add a whole list of keywords. I'm saying use some of the keywords that are relevant in your biography in 160 characters. I'm adding a location, um, which I suppose you can add a whole complete address. I'm not sure if this will be a live link. We'll see. But you can add a location like a city or a state, country. I, I'm going to try to add a specific address. This is the address of Southwestern College, not my house. But uh, I'm going to add something there, and there's a process. If you add a website, there's a process to confirm it. Uh, it's going to be out of our scope here, because it's going to ask you to copy a little code, a little unique code, from your profile here and paste it into your website. I'm not going to get into it. We can look during the, the break if you'd like. But if you want the little verified check mark on your profile, you want to go through the process of verifying your, your website. So that little confirmed check mark on your Pinterest profile is linked to your verified website, but you can do that on your own. I'm going to save. You don't have to fully handcraft that just yet. You need to come back to it at some point. I'm going to move on. So notice the actual profile itself is kind of boring compared to the other ones. On Pinterest, we could add a top graphic and change some of the colors of the accents and such. We can do that also on Facebook to some degree and, Pin and uh, Google Plus to some degree. But on Pinterest, the only thing we can really do at the moment is just change our, our, our icon right here. Nothing really else. We'll probably change that eventually. Let's look at a couple of settings and then we'll we'll go on. But do you see that little gear on the top right? Click the gear. If we don't get time to it for it, analytics is a screen you want to look at, which will show you your statistics. It'll show you your most popular pins, how many clicks, where did your traffic come from. That's under analytics. You don't get that as a personal account. You also don't get promoted pins as a personal account. Promoted pins are kind of like what we talked about last week on Facebook. Remember I said Facebook, one of the things that is effective on Facebook is to is to boost your posts, to pay a little bit, one dollar, five dollars, forty dollars, to get your post visible to more people on Facebook. We can do the same thing on Pinterest. We can boost our pins. I haven't found it as necessary, however, because there are not 1.5 billion people on face on Pinterest like there are on Facebook. There's a few hundred million, and I'm able to find an audience of people for my clients on Pinterest easier without having to pay for it like Facebook. But Twitter has also promoted tweets. You can pay to get your tweets found by more people. You can pay to get your pins found. You can pay to get your Facebook posts found. At the moment there's no payments on Google Plus though, but as we talked about in that class, I really think using communities is great for Google Plus. So we probably won't get time for this one, but we will think about it in terms of Facebook, that if you pay a little bit here and there to reach a little bit more of an audience, it is effective. Find friends is the link that I skipped previously to connect with my Twitter or my Facebook. And then there's help, of course, and log out. Notice log out is kind of hidden. 
you wouldn't really see anywhere. How do I log out? It's almost like they don't want you to log out of Pinterest. But it's hidden inside of that little gear. What I want to look at, though, is edit settings. There's a bunch of settings here, and some you might be surprised that are active. Let's click edit settings inside the gear. I have a few sections on the left here. This is where you would change your email address. So if you don't want to use a, a specific email address, you can change it. Change your password, language, country, all of that. That's the business account basics. Privacy. Hide your profile from search engines and it's off, which is good. I want my Pinterest profile to be found by Google or Yahoo or AOL search or whatever. I do want my site to be found outside of Pinterest. If you don't want that for some reason, you can turn it off. Pinterest did not ask us like Twitter asked us, but it assumed we wanted it yes, which is personalization. Use sites you visit to improve which recommendations and ads you see. Use information from our advertising partners to improve which recommendation and ads you see. On Twitter it asked us that, yes or no, would you like to use your, how did they word it, would you like to use your, basically would you like to let us use cookies to give you the better ads? And we could say yes or no when we activated Twitter. Here it assumes yes. You may or may not want that, so you can turn that off. This does not mean don't show me ads. There's no way around that. This means don't show me ads based on the cookies that track me when I go from site to site. You may or may not care about that. So you can easily turn it on or off right there. If you say, never mind, I'm going to work on other networks. I've got enough to work with. I don't want Pinterest you have to deactivate account. But it gives you 30 days for you to change your mind. You can log back in within 30 days and your account will be intact. There's another place to edit your profile. And then here, notifications. This is the part that I recommend you really look at carefully because all of this is turned on, which means you're going to get a lot of notifications about every single thing that happens on Pinterest. And as a beginner, maybe I do want that. Maybe I do want to know when someone pins my pin, when someone likes it, when someone follows me. Well, do I want this sent via email? Because I'm going to get these notifications anyway when I'm logged into Pinterest in this little notifications screen here. I'm going to get the notification anyway on my mobile device as a, as a notification. Here it's saying we'll send you that as normal and to your email. For me personally and for my clients, I think this is overkill. This is too many emails that are going to be sent to the inbox and eventually you're going to tune them out. Your inbox is going to fill up and you're going to tune these out. So you can easily just say don't send me any emails about activity because you're going to see them anyway in the app itself, in the notifications window of the website. Maybe you do want emails about some of that activity, but then keep scrolling. We'll also let you know about stuff you might like. Weekly inspiration. Again, you decide what you want to know or not, tips and how-tos, invitations to give us feedback. You can even get text messages and then on your desktop. That's the one I would leave on. This is the one that's going to pop up or that could pop up to show you your activity on the site. That, that one could be useful. If you're already also using Facebook or, or Google Plus or Twitter, you can connect the two together so that you can log in quickly and share content quickly.
and there's apps, nothing there really. If you've connected your site, your Pinterest site, your Pinterest uh, page with other websites, they might be listed here. I made a few changes, so I'm going to click Save Settings. And that takes me back to my profile. Yes? Once we get more past all of this and get it up and running and go for a while, um, about how much time would you say you need to dedicate per week to this fresh and good? I would say, as a beginner, you want to add content at least once a week. Notice I didn't see how much time, because it could be as much time or as little time as you want. I read articles that go all over the, the spectrum to say, how, do you, how to be effective on Pinterest with 10 minutes a day. I could manage 10 minutes a day until I forget and then I stop doing it. I could then set myself a goal of once a week I'm going to spend an hour on Pinterest. That'll work too. The point is with any of these networks, you want to try to be on a schedule Stick to it as best as possible. Don't beat yourself up if you miss one week or two weeks. Beat yourself up if you miss two months. But, uh, you know, if you miss a little bit of time, that's okay. And as much time as you want. And maybe as you use it, you'll, you'll actually see, well, I kind of like it, and suddenly you've been there for an hour. That's fine. Maybe you, you like it enough, but you want to have a specific time to work, and ten minutes will work as well. Five minutes. Just actually use it be social on the networks and as we'll show concrete examples you'll figure out what works for you. Okay, let's let's look here. This is our profile. It's empty. Therefore there's no incentive for us to follow, for us to get followed. I have no followers. I want to make sure I edit my profile, add a logo to try to get followers. But just like the other days that we were here, I talked about before you get followers, you have to have something to entice them to follow you for, some reason for that. So one of the first steps that we do is let's create some boards. The boards are the organizational units. These are the folders to organize all of our pictures. So I'm going to say we want to think to create three to five boards, three to five concepts of what I'm going to pin. That's a good goal, three to five. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to put in them yet, but this is part of the process to figure out how I'm going to use Pinterest. I showed examples from Chuck and Mashable and just some other random ones, and you saw that there was DIY this and that, and how to do this, and infographics, and great photos and funny cats. There's all of these boards, all of these ideas. So I'm going to think here, what kind of boards can I create for Victor's Bakery for potential people to care about? So all social media for businesses, you have to think about, about things that way most of the time. What are my followers going to care about? more than what am I going to care about. Because on my personal Twitter, I'm going to post whatever dumb stuff I like to post. And if people like it, great. If they don't, great. I had fun. But for business, I want to try to think in terms about who, what might someone react to? Who might like this? Why would they care about that? This photo maybe will get me a sale, maybe will get me likes, will maybe will get me a reply. So here on this screen we've got Create Board. Go ahead and click on Create Board. It asks for a name. You notice suggestions. Places to go, recipes to make. It doesn't simply call it places or recipes. It calls it, again, an active language in verbs. So if I was simply going to make a cookies, a cookies uh, board, that would be okay. But I could think about it in terms of cookies to bake, tasty cookies to bake, easy cookies to bake, funny cookies to bake. So some sort of action, some sort of adjective. Can yes. change the amount of this month or next month? 
be following that due to you following cookies to it? Or does it, is, doesn't it work that way? Do you mean change the name of this board when necessary? Yeah. Hmm, good question. Um, well, not quite sure. People to you at the end of the year. Honestly, I'm not quite sure. Usually, we would create these boards and add more to them, not really think about changing them, but I don't know, that might be a viable strategy. Seasonal, seasonal mix yes, the point is that I'm not exactly sure if it's very useful to change them. Maybe. I don't know. I need to do the research. But along your lines, I would make a board called Fall Favorite Recipes, Autumn Amazing Recipes, Spring Super Recipes. You know, I could make boards for all of those seasons so that I'm not going to be renaming a particular board. I'm just going to make a board for every season, every holiday. You're not limited. Not limited. That's right. I'm going to do funny cookies to bake. Yummy cookies to bake. Description. Again, uh, it's people find stuff on on all of these networks in two ways. One, someone sends it to them, or one, they find it, they look for it themselves. So if I want people to find my stuff, I want to add a description, a little text that describes it, so that when someone searches, they could find it. So we'll say here, our collection of the yummiest, yummy cookies. And so easy to bake yourself. Think again in terms of real people looking at this stuff not in terms of what is Google going to see, what is Bing going to see, what is Yahoo going to see. It's mechanical. You want it to be organic. What will people see? What will people search for and care for? I guess you have a limit here too, but it doesn't tell you until you save it. Probably 160 characters. Category. A bunch to choose from. So this is when you chose when you chose those categories. I chose, you know, uh, baking and small business and all of that. If you choose the right categories, hopefully you'll get found. And notice you can only choose one at a time. You can't overlap a board to multiple categories. You can pin or you can attach a pin board to a map. So this might be useful to you if you are a local business. If I have a, a shop on Main Street, I can attach this board to an address. I fill in the address. And then when people see this pin, they will also see that there's a map, and better yet, directions to go to my shop. So if I don't have a location, this might not be so useful. But if I do have a real-world location and add a map, that could drive traffic, literal traffic, to my location. We have the secret boards, which is their term for private boards. You can make your whole account private, which for a business you really don't want. You want it to be public so people can follow you. But you could make secret boards that only certain people have access to like your VIP customers. You could have a newsletter, let's say. You've got a few subscribers to your newsletter, and they say, don't forget to follow us on Pinterest. Someone that doesn't use Pinterest might say, well, who cares? I, I don't like Pinterest. I'm on Facebook. But if on your newsletter you say, follow us on Pinterest for exclusive coupons, that could entice them a little bit more. And to entice more followers, again, follow our secret board, or request access to our secret board for exclusive 50% off coupons. This one at the moment, this one at the moment I'm not going to make it secret, but that's a concept for using a secret board for exclusive content for VIP customers. In Facebook we saw that we have managers, and on Google Plus we saw we had managers. On uh, Pinterest, it's kind of kind of got a weird way to do it. You, you don't add managers to the whole account. You add managers, in a sense, to individual boards. Those are collaborators. You've put an email address here of someone else that has a Pinterest account. You add their credentials here, and other people then can add to that board. 
So I think at the moment they need to they need to improve their collaborators tool, their their managers tool. I don't think it's the best it could be. I think the better ones are Google Plus and Facebook. Twitter has a version of it, which is also kind of weird. And this one I think is not as good because I believe the original creator of the board still has the ultimate power, not the collaborators. So the original creator, maybe someone that you hired, an intern you hired to create all of this for you, and she leaves the company, and you don't hear from them anymore, well, the original creator of the board is gone, and these collaborators, I don't believe they have the full control like the original creator. So Pinterest needs to fix that. So I'm going to click Create, and I've got one. And my goal is three to five boards. Uh, I created the board, and it took me into the board. I want to, I want to back up to the top level again. So click the name of your business again. It's annoying. You create the board and it puts you in the board. I don't want to be in the board. I still want to be on my top level here, my profile, so that I can create two more boards. Let's see, DIY Halloween recipes. Some keywords right there. Halloween, it's coming up. DIY recipes. I don't have that action verbiage, but I don't always have to have it. I can mix it up, but I simply wouldn't call it recipes or Halloween. DIY Halloween recipes might be more effective. So again, take up this space to really explain what the board is and hopefully to get found. You're going to need to uh, make sure you go back to your your profile and, you click. and I see the original board. And then on the left side you see create board. Oh, oh, let me see. Click that. It's, I see. Mm -hmm. So let's see. DIY Halloween recipe. So this is an art and a science. Marketing. What are you going to write on these things? Maybe you have, an, a, you have a very literal idea, and that's a good starting point. But marketing. Marketing is th that art and science of, getting, of convincing people of something. Did anyone ever watch the Mad Men series? Yeah. So if you did in there, it's, a, it's, a, it's about the people in the drama, sure. But then they have that aspect of, the, of, of, the, of Madison Avenue, of, of the marketers that are trying to sell you. I, think, I thought it was pretty interesting. I only watched the first season and then I didn't like it. But I remember seeing, which I thought was very fascinating, in, the, in there they had a plot line about how did the Madison Avenue marketers convince the American public that smoking was, was great and safe in the 60s. So they had a few articles about, I mean, a few episodes about that. They did marketing, they did advertising, they convinced you. And that's a lot of what it is when you boil it down, what's marketing, what's advertising, it's convincing someone of something. You're being convinced that you're hungry, so eat this hamburger. You're being convinced of you need financial security, so buy this annuity. You're being convinced you stink, so buy this shampoo. So right here, I'm being convinced. You can do this yourself in a snap, the perfect recipe. Halloween is coming up. So it's that art and the science, and the more you do it, the better you might get at it. But it's convincing people. Why would they care? Yes. Okay. Um, so are they literally like eventually clicking on your website to get the recipe? Yes. I might have so like a little... You have to change your website to have the recipe on it. You know, you have that recipe on your website all the time? Yeah. 
I would be using my recipe, I mean I would be using my website as well to have the actual content. I would post the recipes there. I would really just post like little previews or snippets of things to get them to come back to my website. Because on my website is where the button says buy now, add to shopping cart, book a table, etc. So yeah, I'm still going to get people to come back to my website. If I only keep them on social networks, I might get some results there, but I still ultimately want them to go back to my website. Yes? It would show on your Pinterest uh, profile. Um, it would show it, uh, I believe, like right under the right under the real address, somewhere around here. Definitely, obviously, here somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's another food category, and then now I've got two boards here. I want three to five of them, and we saw chunks profile, he had most of his things were about web design and web development and technology, but he had one on tattoos and one on Star Wars and one on origami. So it doesn't always have to be exactly the content that is what your business is about. I could put other tangential fun stuff. How much of a tangent should I go? How far off base should I go? Off message? That's going to be up to you to decide. But you want to mix things up, not always about you and you and you and selling and everything. In these boards, we will be able to put your own content and repurposed content, yes. But then I'm saying on the higher level, the pin board itself, um, I've, got, I've got very obviously stuff about baking and cookies and recipes. Maybe I might also have here inspirational, inspirational chefs, you know, someone related to food and a board all about these these chefs that inspire my my business. Okay, so I know I said three to five, but for me two will be fine for the moment. I'm gonna move on. Any questions so far on creating a board? Okay, so we can either put our own content or repurposed content, 80%, 20%, right? So if I resolve that I'm going to post 10 pins, how many are repurposed and how many are original under that ratio? Eight, Eight original and, tw and two um, repurposed. So that's a good ratio to think about. So let's say, first we'll start with repurposing people's content. I don't know what to post yet. So here's what we'll do. Click on the, the Pinterest icon on the very top left corner near, near the search box. Click on that. Here it's going to show you all of the pins of the accounts and the topics you followed. And it says, are you not seeing what you thought you were? So you can change those interests. I'm seeing some stuff here. Do they just add it, keep adding, or do you have to delete stuff? It'll keep adding. It's going to be just like a, a, a long stream of new stuff every time you log in. Can you delete stuff? It's not that it's on your profile for you to delete. It's just, it's going to go away. Something new will push down the old stuff. So this is what, this is other people's stuff. I'm going to scroll down and see if I find anything that is baking related. Twenty adorable mini versions of your favorite fall desserts. So let's say you find any content here that is appropriate. If you hover your mouse over any of these pins, you get the magnifying glass and you get a few actions. You get the the heart, 
which is like a like on Facebook, which is like a plus one on Google+, Plus, which is like a favorite on Twitter, the heart. So it's a way to like on Pinterest. It's the heart. So as I said on the other networks, that's the lowest level of interaction. Not the worst, just the lowest. So if I click on that, I gave that a heart, and now the the user Delish got a notification up on this little top right pin yin yang they got a little notification that said Victor's Bakery liked your pin and you see over here snickerdoodle cheesecake bars same thing click the favorite on that and in this case sugary sweets got the notification Oreo cheesecake cookies what has God wrought? So you click on that and they get the notification. The point of that is now I'm making these profiles aware of my presence. If I had something more to offer them, they might see my profile and follow my whole profile or individual boards. But this is this should not be new. We did this on Twitter. We did this on Google Plus. We, we we did this before on the networks. We're going to be interacting with random accounts. Some of them are going to follow back or comment back, and some are going to ignore. Most are going to ignore. It's just a numbers game. You can spend one day a week, ten minutes, just doing this for ten minutes straight, going in and favoriting stuff. Not randomly, not favoriting that battleship photo and favoriting that computer photo if my profile is about cookies, but favoriting content that's related so that hopefully some of these will favorite my content back. Or I can comment, I can click on a photo. If you click on a photo, it shows it it shows it um, in the spotlight and so here if you click on any one of these for example I can also add a comment it won't let me do it yet because I have not verified my email it might not let you do it either it might not let you comment until you verify your email if you want to verify it. but if I add a comment that's a higher level up I've put in a little bit more effort hopefully I've I've uh, thought about something to write instead of just yum. Maybe a question, maybe get the conversation rolling. And then maybe I get a follow. I just got a follow this morning when I was... Uh, so we were talking about investing a little while ago and I have an account on TD Ameritrade and, and I love it. I give them a call 24 hours a day, they answer my questions. I called them before I got here about something, they answered my question as always. I tweeted to Ameritrade and I said, you know, you guys are making me fall in love with you every time I call you. You always answer my questions. I got, a, I got a tweet back from one of the community managers of that company and said, we love you too. And then we, I, we had a little back and forth, we had a little back and forth Twitter conversation and eventually she followed me. So I got a new follower from someone that has, that has 20,000 followers. So it does happen. You, you start this social interaction in a social network and you will get social, you will get replies, you will get tweets, you will get follows. And, the, and those numbers increasing stroke my ego, sure, but as a, as a business, those numbers mean an audience. When I post something, hopefully then I get a result. More followers, more likes, more buys, inquiries, sales. So I'm not going to be able to comment until I, until I confirm my email, but that's another thing I can do. And then the other thing is pin it, which which is a share. I can take their thing and share it from my profile. That's like a share on Facebook, a, re, a retweet on Twitter, a share on Google+, they call it a pin it, or, or a repin. Sometimes you see it called a repin. That's another level. So favorite, repin, comment. What's the highest level again? Follow. The follow is the highest level. I love this content so much that I'm going to want to follow everything that AJ is pinning. So if I click on a profile, 
there's their profile, 11 boards, 5,000 pins, 22 followers, 197 likes, 388 following. I might like all of these pins, all of these pin boards, so I can click follow. So I like them all, except for the wrong use of apostrophes. But I like them all, so I can click follow here, and I'm going to follow them all. Or I can go to specifically to capes, to cupcakes and muffins, and follow that board. So now AJ got a notification. Victor's Bakery followed your board. AJ has the options of saying, cool, thanks, and move on with their day. They can also say, cool, thanks, and follow me. So you're not going to get followers just because you post great content. You're going to get followers because you try to get followers. You become active also. You follow accounts. You favorite content. You comment on content. You repin content. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to click pin it on one of these things and share it from my profile. Let's say this one, red hot velvet cinnamon rolls. Not the best photo there, but let's say I want to let's say I want to share these. This is perfect for Halloween here ghost meringues. So I've got pin it, click that. So on any of these things that you see, let's try this if you'd like. Click pin it. And what's going to happen is it's basically going to copy their pin and then share it on one of your pin boards. This is at 80-20%. Maybe in the beginning I'm going to be 80% repurposed and 20% original because I don't have a lot to share yet. But now that I know that I want to be sharing 80% of my content, maybe I'm going to take out my phone and start taking lots of photos of my stuff. And throughout the days and weeks and months, share that stuff. But in the beginning, maybe 80% will be other people's stuff. So this is going to get shared. That picture, I didn't take it, but it's relevant to my board. It's going to help me build followers because here, whoever shared this will get a notification. Victor's Bakery shared your pin. Then they might follow me, comment, favorite. It comes with this description, ghost meringues for Halloween. Only three ingredients. It's so easy to make. I can edit that if I want. I can remove it completely, change it to whatever I want. I can put my web address, buy these meringues on our site now. Even though I didn't make these, I didn't shoot these, this photo, but my company, maybe we sell a version of this. I could do that as well. Buy it on our Are you site. Actually, changing somebody's text that they have on their site? Not on their original. No, this is a copy. This is a copy being put on my profile, and their original still has that text. So it's so like you're basically adding text to what was already there. Yes, okay. or I could remove it completely and only add my text. On my copy of it, it has what I wrote. But on their copy, it has the original text. Oh, that's bizarre to me. It is. Yes. Sir. Maybe they will remove this later. Maybe they will keep this. But that's just the way Pinterest works at the moment. The cool thing, though, as we'll see, is it will still have the original link, and you can't take that away. It'll have the original link of where it came from. So that can never be removed. So, so you actually don't have to have that exact thing. Thing that you're showing there in order to put your checks on it says oh, buy it on our site now. <laughs> yeah, in a sense you can reuse other people's stuff. You can definitely go down that slippery slope to completely reuse other people's work in your own vein, of course. And that could happen to us too. And obviously I could hate that or I could love it. There's a school of thought that says, you know, no no there's no such thing as bad publicity. So in a sense, there's no such thing as stealing my work. I want all my work to be passed out everywhere so that I can get a sale. And yeah, maybe someone that is very Photoshop tech savvy could take my photo, remove my logo, put their logo. But that's a lot of effort to, for very little. At the very least here, maybe they took out completely my text that says buy this on victor.com and they put buy it on john.com. That is, that is allowed. 
but the original photo will still exist and have a link back to victor.com. I have to choose which board to put it into, so I'll put it into Halloween. And now I have one pin on my profile, and all my zero followers would see that. So the more followers I get, they will see this stuff. So let's do this. Let's take a couple of minutes on your own. You try that a little bit. Uh, just browse what's here. Favorite some stuff. Maybe comment. Maybe pin. Let's just take two minutes, and then uh, and then we'll take a break. And when we come back, we'll say, "Okay, that's other people's stuff. What about my stuff?" We'll address that right after the the break. So we'll say, uh, "In two minutes from now, it's two fifty one, and then we'll take a ten minute break. We'll be back at two at three o two.